I was always a tinkerer, and at home, I destroyed my dad's garage a couple times over in the basement, and I would take things apart, and sometimes I'd be able to get them back together, other times I didn't. I always just loved that. I was really interested in the environmental water stuff because of the Great Lakes and the Detroit River and the pollution, and so that kind of caught my, my interest. I really got hooked on research and even teaching. One thing led to another, and I ended up at UBC in 1973. I like to see the light bulbs go on in a classroom when I'm talking to students, whether it be undergraduate or graduate, and I plant an idea, and sometimes I challenge them. I said, do you think this is sufficient? Is it, is it, is it okay? Can we do better? And uh, just trying to, trying to get them to think outside the box, because that's what I was taught at the University of Windsor. I had a couple of wonderful mentors there who became my PhD supervisors there, and they always taught me, even at the undergrad level, they taught me, think outside the box, don't accept the status quo. I've been fortunate that a lot of my PhD students have got academic positions of their own or senior positions in, in, uh, in consulting or even government. I've also really enjoyed the fact that I've, I, I guess I've been lucky in the sense that I've had three or four technologies that have gone from the lab into, into full-scale practice and somebody's actually using it. The nutrient program at UBC was designed to extract a, a phosphorus-based compound from municipal wastewater effluent that was causing major problems. If it stayed in the wastewater treatment plant, it clogged up the pipes and was a major problem. And if it was released into the environment, it caused a problem. And so the research was designed to, to figure out a way to capture it and make, a, make it something that was viable for both the industry to, to use and to protect the environment. Don has come up with a technique that allows uh, nitrogen and phosphorus to be extracted from those process streams in the form of a very compact, slowly dissolving fertilizer. We knew we had something that nobody else had. We built a better mouse trap, and then UBC decided, well, it's time to spin off a company. So we have a company, Ostera, we have a product, Crystal Green, and we have the reactor itself called the Pearl Series. And that's how the company was formed. So it's probably the most successful company in this area in the world is a resource that we're recovering from wastewater, from domestic sewage. It can be recovered from animal waste as well. We've proven that with dairy waste and with swine waste. And, uh, and it's, a, it's a valuable resource. The pellets that we produce are a slow release, high quality fertilizer. It starts with sewage, goes through the treatment, comes through the technology we developed, and produces these beautiful pellets that are sold at a premium price. Don believes in, he says, you surround yourself with the best possible people, give them the, the resources they need to do their job and then get out of their way, right? And that's, and, and only really positive people do that. Don sort of empowers you, gives you the resources, and then lets you, lets you loose, and that's how you get the best collaboration. I think people like to come and talk to Don. I think they find him practical. I think they find him down to earth. I think they find him cooperative and collegial. Not every university professor has those attributes. Uh, Don has them in spades. You get back what you give, I always feel, and, and the profession is a self-regulating profession, and it happens not just in the engineering side, but also with respect to the research councils, like NSERC, for example, Natural Science Engineering. I just finished a three-year uh, tour of duties, I call it, as, as group chair for our division. I was the uh, editor of the Canadian Journal of Civil Engineering for 10 years, the editor of the Journal of Environmental Science for another seven years and, uh, on the ed editorial board. And, and I always find that whatever I give, I get back two, three-fold. I've been doing the firefighters toy drive in North Vancouver for about 12, 13 years, and, the, and my staff in the front office won't let me drop that because they bring in more toys than I ever do, you know? So it's become an annual thing starting in November, and we didn't work with the, uh, with the firefighters in the Vancouver toy drive, and the food bank as well. My wife is also very active, and, and that's been very, very rewarding, and it gives a different perspective. And, and to me, it says, hey, the engineers are not just about going in the lab and playing and tinkering and, and, and uh, you know, producing a piece of work and writing up a paper. It's getting involved in the community. And, and making a difference. I think that's our obligation. You can't stop. You have to have a reason, in my opinion, to get up in the morning and do what you like to do and to keep going. It's a philosophy my dad taught me, actually. So I'm quite proud of that.